Hey, thanks for checking out Nuts and Bolts with Tone, and welcome to my channel. Today, I am going to show you how to replace inner tie rods. They are not that difficult with the way I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, this is on a 2016 Sprinter, uh, and these Sprinters always have bad inner tie rods. You should always check them if you work on Sprinters ever, because I'll tell you what, after watching this video, you're going to be able to make a two-hour job and get it done in a half hour. So before we do that, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Let's go check it out. Do you have bad inner tie rods? One way to tell is to rock the steering wheel side to side with the tires on the ground. That is the inner tie rod hitting the rack. In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace the inner tie rods. Okay, so step one is going to be to remove the front wheels. All right, next step, you want to do this while it's still connected. You need to break the nut loose right here. I like to use my Olsa Tools adjustable wrenches. I'm going to see if I can do this one-handed. And like that, it's broke loose. You saw that this did not give. All right, once you get done with that, the next step is going to be to remove the nut. Now, every vehicle is going to be different on how, on how you get to this. Uh, I, I personally like to use my Capri Tools uh, Flex Head Impact. And then I got the, uh, the Olsa Tools uh, Deep Impact Sockets. So we're going to go ahead and just throw that on there. This is a Sprinter, so it's a 21 millimeter. Boom, like that. That's off. Next step I'm not going to be able to do on the phone, you're going to hit the, the knuckle right here. They make tools to pop these loose. Uh, my, my tool is a hammer. Uh, it's actually dynamic tools. I won this in a giveaway. All right, I'm just going to hit this right here, and then this tie rod's going to drop. All right, it took two hits, and it dropped. You can see right there, I hit it right there. Uh, the next step is going to be to turn your outer tie rod off of the inner tie rod. This is your inner tie rod. All right, in this case, it's kind of stuck. So what I'm gonna have to do is put a wrench right there and turn this. Now you wanna count your turns when you take it off so you put it back exactly how it came off so that way your alignment is close. Okay, so most of the time your outer tie rods, they just spin off. Uh, this outer tie rod has a spot here for a wrench. I put a wrench here and a wrench here and it didn't wanna budge, so Go ahead and back this and i'm going to go ahead and back this nut off a little bit more and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to go ahead and turn the inner tie rod to break it free from the outer tie rod while the outer tie rod is supported out here to give me some better leverage sometimes you got to use a torch sometimes you just spray some pb blast right here it helps um, or sometimes you got to use a torch maybe a map gas or if you have a big torch uh, if you live in a rust area you got to use a big torch california you know, a map gas torch, some uh, some PB blast works. All right, let me get this broke loose. What you want to do is just back your nut off like this and just heat this up a little bit. Like that. You grab your inner tie rod and you can break it loose. And now the outer tie rod should spin off easily. All right, once you have your outer tie rod off the nut, it's easier to just get a socket and turn it off. And that way you gun that nut off. Now, depending on the, the brand of inner tie rods you get, you that it may come with a nut, it may not. Sprinter inner tie rods, if you get really good ones, it comes with a nut. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take that clamp off right there for that bellows boot. All right, so once you get this clamp off right here, now every vehicle is gonna vary on how you access this, but the next step is gonna to be to remove the inside clamp. Uh, I just take uh, dikes and cut it off. And then we're just gonna twist this bellows boot. I'm gonna give you some good light. Then we're just going to grab this bellows boot and twist it and pull it off. It'll twist straight off. All right, so once you get your bellows boot off, you want to pay attention to the vent. A lot of times there's a vent on top. 
You want to obviously have this up because if it was down below, it wouldn't vent very good. So now that we got that off, now this next step is going to vary based on the tools that you have. So I have the tool that's going to be hard to do one handed. Let me try to get this set up here. Okay. All right. So, uh, so the hard part is getting the tool to slide up while having the inner tie rod go through the center. All right. Okay, so the tool is on there now. Okay, so let me just grab my ratchet. Alright, now I have not done anything except for put the tool on there with a 30 millimeter socket. It's the Mayhew Tools inner tie rod tool set. Now what it does is it slips over the inside of the inner tie rod. Now we're gonna watch how simple this is. Like that, okay. You can use the tool to unthread it, or I'll do it like this, just to show you how simple it is to come out. And the inner tie rod comes out like that. Now I do a lot of these sprinter inner tie rod ends. And so one of the things that I like <clears throat> is after using these uh, quite a few times, uh, one of the springs here popped off, it broke. I contacted Mayhew Tools and they, uh, within a week, they got me the replacement. And this is the, the green one here. So this is the tool kit to have. Now, if you don't have this, uh, sometimes you have to use uh, different ways to get them off is a big pipe wrench, uh, a big set of channel, a big set of crescent wrench, an old technician friend of mine, Henry, Henry Henderson, gave me this crescent wrench a long time ago when I was doing an inner tie rod, back when I didn't have a ton of tools. Uh, he's one of the fastest guys I ever worked with. Uh, another way to do it is uh, you can use these. These are snap-on. Uh, I believe Knipex makes them too. Um, you have this uh, adjusting nut here, and it basically makes it like a uh, like an adjustable wrench. You can use that. Um, actually, I bought this for sprinters before I got the Mayhew Tools Kit. But I do so many inner tie rods that this Mayhew Tools Kit is the way to go. Right there, three piece interchangeable inner tie rod tool kit. Mayhew Tools, there's the part number. All right, and so now we're gonna go ahead and get our new inner tie rod ready to go. All right, so I like to put a little bit of uh, Loctite on here. Um, some of the uh, domestic vehicles come with a little tube of Loctite uh, to put on there. Now, one thing that you wanna do that's gonna make things a lot easier for you is you wanna grab the end of the inner tie rod. See if I can do this with one hand. And you wanna go ahead and, and break the joint like that and move it side to side. So that way when you install it, you have mobility with this inner tie rod because it gets stuck in a certain position. And when you're trying to thread it on, It doesn't want to, it doesn't want to thread on. And I'm trying to see if I can get this thing to start. I probably won't be able to with one hand. Um, there we go, I almost had it. See what'll happen is it'll start to thread and then when you move the inner tie rod, it'll pop out. And so there you can see it's going. And you run this in until it's tight. 
So once you've run the, the inner tie rod in and got it tight, you put the tool back on there and you put your ratchet on there and all you got to give it is one little, uh, and it's tight. That's it. You can put a torque wrench on it if you, if that makes you feel comfortable. But, uh, I don't think I've ever torqued an inner, no, I've never torqued an inner tie rod before. So with this tool, I can do this job from start to finish in 25 minutes and it is a two hour job that it pays. And I do these all the time. So, get Now I like to take some Silglide and put it in this end of the bellows boot. So that way when I'm doing my alignment, I don't have to loosen the clamp. And this will slide on the inner tie rod when I make my toe adjustment. So from here, you're just going to slide this on. Let's see. So you're going to make sure that you put the vent up. That vent right there, you're going to put it up and you're just going to pop it on the rack right there. And I usually just use a zip tie and re-zip tie it. Um, most racks nowadays come with the inner tie rod zip tied to the rack anyways. Uh, so from here, you're going to go ahead and make sure that you put your clamp on first. <clears throat> you're going to go ahead and slide your clamp on before you put your nut on. And then you're gonna put your nut on, like that. And then you're gonna thread your inner, your outer tie rod on the same amount of turns that you put it on. And now one more tip is before you align this thing, I know you're gonna loosen this nut to make your toe adjustment, but you wanna give it like a little snug because even the slightest bit of looseness right here and your, your steering will have play in it. Um, and so you wanna make sure that you have this, just give it like a little and then when you go to do your toe adjustment, then loosen it up, make your toe adjustment. And then just don't forget to put your clamp back on the boot and do them in pairs. You wanna do both sides. All right, so when tightening your outer tie rods, uh, sometimes the center, um, the center of the tie rod will spin and it'll be spinning the whole ball. Uh, so a couple ways to do it is one, you use an air gun and you hit the trigger, just zap, 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 zap. Sometimes that quick initial zap gets it to move. Um, and then sometimes uh, what you can do is if you can apply pressure under the tie rod, you can use a pry bar, you can use a jack, you can use a pulse, a pull jack um, to push this up and the ball and the part that bites into the knuckle or, or spindle or whatever will help push up in there and it will help hold it solid so you can run your nut in. And then sometimes on this one, uh, I don't know if you can see it, this one actually has a spot in the middle where you can put an Allen, uh, but a lot of them don't have that. So that's a little tip to get this to, to go on when your, tie, when your ball joints are spinning. And that goes for any type of ball joint or tie rod uh, that connects this way where the center spins. Okay, so now in the video, I showed you the multiple different kinds of tools that you can use uh, for inner tie rods. Now, inner tie rods can be tricky because sometimes the inner tie rod is this far inset into the frame, the cradle, the cross member, things like that. Uh, when you have situations like that, uh, a crescent wrench, a pipe wrench, things like that, they're not going to work. So this tool that I have right here, this Mayhew Tools uh, tool for inner tie rods, man, this is the way to go. And if you do any inner tie rods at all, you're gonna be knocking them out and you're gonna make a ton of money with this tool. So thanks for watching the video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, and hit the bell you get notified of all my future content, which you definitely don't want to miss. Also, check me out on Instagram, where you can see my daily life as a mechanic. Show you tools, show you gas, show you diesel, show you some tips and tricks along the way that will help you in either diagnosing your vehicle uh, easily or making more money with tip with some with some uh, with some tricks. So check out my merchandise store where you can get yourself a T-shirt or a coffee cup. Thanks for watching the video. I'll see you next time.